For those in a hurry, we're gonna do this very quick. You're gonna take the meter and you're gonna set it to the V with the solid and dash lines. It means you're on DC voltage. You're gonna take your red lead and you're gonna put it to where it says V. You're gonna take your black lead and it's gonna go on the common or it should be a minus for negative. You're gonna hook that up. Your red lead is gonna go on your positive. And honestly, it doesn't even matter if you're just checking the battery. Your black lead is gonna go on the negative. And you should read between 12 volts and 13, depending on if the car was just started. If you have that, that means that the battery is most likely good. Sometimes old timers will tell you to use a test light and hook it to the battery to see if it uh, is good or not, but that's not a good test for a battery. Yeah, it's a 12 volt uh, light bulb and the brightness of the light bulb could indicate the possible charge of the battery, but you still don't know the actual physical number. That's when this comes into play. You have to have a meter to be sure your battery is good. I will not accept anything else than a meter reading because this is what is telling you what the battery is reading. The reason my battery is reading 13 is because I just drove the car into the shop and shut it off. So there's a residual charge. The best way to describe this is if you cook something in the microwave, the outside is super, super hot. Wait a couple minutes for it to cool down. It's the same thing with the battery. There's an excessive charge to it right now. After a couple of minutes, it'll dissipate and it'll go back down to the normal, vo normal voltage, about 12.6, which is what the battery should be. But typical car batteries are between 12 to 12.5, depending on uh, the age of the battery. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start the car. You'll watch it dip down. Now the 14 volts you saw is the alternator charging the battery. A good indicator or a good way to test the battery without using an actual load tester is do like I did and crank the engine three times. By the third time, if the voltage drops below 10 to about nine or eight volts, you got a weak battery and it's not uh, holding charge anymore. I'm gonna run through the meter uh, very quickly, we'll say. So V with a squiggly is AC voltage, that's house voltage. And or if you want to use it to check like wheel speed sensors, um, V with a solid and dash line is DC voltage, which means direct current. That is what we have in automotive cars or in cars in general with uh, battery powered stuff. All right. They're all they're all DC. So um, my meter automatically sets the range. If you have a meter with numbers, you're going to want to set it to DCV for direct current voltage and you want to go with 20. You're going with 20 because it's going to put the decimal point where you need to see it. If you have it on 200, it'll move the decimal point over one. You'll still get the same reading. It'll show 20 out of 200, but you, you'd you rather just stick with 20 or 15 if it has 15, which is rare, but usually about 20. Uh, 300 millivolt DC, that's super low voltage. So that's pretty much going to set the decimal point three spots to the right. Uh, so we're going to go with super low voltage. You'll see it'll go OL for out of limits because it's too much voltage on our small scale, it's too big, it's too great. So uh, the horseshoe looking thing, or the uh, uh, Greek letter, uh, omega maybe, is for ohms, that is resistance of stuff. We will use that to check for wiring issues. Uh, a is for amperage, and squiggly is for AC amperage. And of course, uh, A with solid and dotted is DC amperage. When we do those, it's testing current draw, so the best way to put it is how we're taught in school is voltage is the push and amperage is the power, right? Wow. So um, when you're checking a car battery, you're always going to stick with volts. Uh, when you check a draw, you're going to switch to amperage, but it's a different type of measurement and it's not what we're doing here. Here we're just using a meter how to check the car battery, all right? Now in the beginning of my video, I said it doesn't matter when connecting the battery uh, to the meter with the cables and I'll show you why. So... I did red on positive, however, I was connected to my negative. If you caught that, good on you, you're paying attention. Same thing with the, uh, the negative black lead, I have it to my red, okay? So I'll show you the only thing that happens when you reverse the cables when you're checking just voltage, right? Very important, which is voltage. So right now I have negative on negative and positive on positive. And we're showing 13.81 because it's measuring the flow of the voltage. That's it, it, it tests the flow and it measures it through the meter, right? Now I'm going to reverse the leads. I'll do it right here. I'll take red out and I'll take black out. I'll put black and red. 
and I'll put red and black. The only thing it did different is now it has a minus in front of it, all right? It's just showing you the reversing of voltage. That's it. So that's why I said it doesn't really matter when checking the voltage of a battery. So we're just checking the voltage. We are just checking the voltage. I know I talk fast, sorry. So again, there's a minus 12.84. If I take the black out of the, the red, the red out of the black, and I put them where they belong, now we're reading it the right way. So now there is no minus, all right? So that's all it's telling you is the way that the voltage is flowing. So it doesn't really matter when you're checking the battery. So in case you caught that, good on you. And that's why I said it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. So here's something I want to show you is it's important to make sure you're checking the battery first and then the connection to the car second. So what I mean by that is you're going to check the battery on the actual posts. If I check it on the actual post, I got 12.84. Now when I check it on the actual terminals or the connectors, I should get the exact same. It's, it's dirty and crusty. 12.84. Now let's say you have a car that uh, go you go to crank it and it's clicking. You check the turn, you check the post, and you got battery voltage. The battery is good. Well, it's not. You got to continue to check the terminals to make sure you got the right voltage, and then you want to grab them and see to make sure you can't wiggle them. All right, because if you can wiggle these and get them to slide, that means there's a poor connection in there, and you will have a car that when it goes to pull the juice from the battery, it'll snap off and it won't, you'll lose power. So if you go to crank the key and all of a sudden the dash goes blank, that means you have a poor connection. You may have a good battery, but you got a poor connection. So keep that in mind. As far as checking the alternator with the multimeter, you can do just like we did. You hook the meter up to the battery, you start the car, you can put on your accessories, meaning your wipers, your radio, your rear defrost, your heater, turn the fan on high, turn your headlights on, the high beams, turn signals, hazards, or whatever you got, press the brakes, the voltage of the battery should maintain between 13 to 14.5 to let you know it's still charging. If it drops below that and gets down to battery voltage, the alternator is not working or it's not holding up uh, to, the, to the load that it's demanding, right? Um, if you rev the engine and the alternator charges more, then you know you can have a weak alternator so it's still charging, but it's only charging when you're revving it above a certain RPM. Is that the best way to check an alternator? It's not the best way. Is it doable? It absolutely is doable. I've diagnosed many cars in my time just with a simple meter hooked up to the battery and turning on the uh, accessories and then seeing where the, the amperage is at, I'm sorry, where the voltage is at with the battery. Uh, there's also times to where the alternator could be trying to charge the battery, but the battery is so weak that it won't let, it won't take a charge. So. As it's running, it'll be at 14, maybe 13, something like that. But as soon as you turn the car off and turn the key back on or just turn the car off and watch the battery voltage, it's right back down to 9 or 10 volts. So uh, that indicates more of a bad battery. And if the battery is weak and an alternator has to do most of the work, it will make your alternator prematurely fail if you're running it off of a weak battery. One test that people used to always tell me they did, which is not a good test but it's also not a bad test but it depends on the car they i used to work at autozone part-time and they would come in and say i need a new alternator well i'm so used to selling parts to people that don't know what they're doing that uh, i would ask why do you need an alternator and they would reply well while the engine's running i disconnect the battery and the car dies that means my alternator's not charging that is not the right test now if this were a 1970 Chevy Camaro. Whoa, nice headers. That would work because there's a bunch of power wires that come off of the back of the alternator. So as soon as the alternator is running, it's powering the car and charging the battery. So if you disconnect the battery, all it did was it stopped charging the battery. Now it's still powering whatever items it's running, all right? So on an older car, if you disconnect the battery and the alternator's not charging, the car would die because there's no extra voltage coming from the alternator. However, in any car from like 1992 and up, the, the alternator just charges the battery and the rest of the power wires are ran off of the battery and or the engine or the fuse box. So it's not a viable test. It's not a good test at all. So I just tell people, don't use that as a test. Use a meter or have a, uh, a digital alternator checker that can put a load on the battery while the car's running to see if it can keep up with the amperage and stuff. So um, I hope this video helps.
very quick introduction on how to use a meter just for checking the battery and alternator really quick. Um, I say really quick a lot, but uh, I hope this helps. And, uh, you know, take care out there. Thanks for watching.